Okay, first off, let me apologize for some of the weird angles you're going to see over the course of this vlog. I was playing around with some things, and some worked, and some didn't. You live and you learn. Second, if you hear a little salt in my voice, it's because I'm in fact salty, not happy, disgruntled, and getting retilted during editing as I'm reliving these hands. Spoiler alert, this doesn't end well. Okay, disclaimers out of the way, let's get on with this debacle. So I've heard my whole life about LA traffic. This traffic is, um, this traffic is something else. I'll tell you that, something else. I know, I know, it's been a minute. The last two months have been hectic, hectic. I last left you thinking that the next vlog was going to be about a trip to LA. Well, I started editing that, and honestly, there just wasn't that much content there. It was a lot of fun sightseeing, especially since I'd never been to LA, but only about two hands of poker. You want a mid-session update, a bicycle casino edition? They're gambling. They gamble in there. And I am uh, stuck. I think I'm down a whole $15 as of this point. I honestly have not had many hands to play. But they're gambling. Good for them. Managed to squeak out a win. $19. $19 up. My first session here at the bike. Interesting for me, probably not so much for you. I assume you know what the Hollywood sign looks like. No? So after deciding to skip the LA vlog, I made the executive decision to just vault all the June, July, and August vlogs. Let's get the content more up to date. It's actually too bad too, because there was some gold footage in some of those vlogs. There was a vlog of me moving out of the condo in Summerlin and into a house. 6.45, Wednesday, June 30th. And it's moving day. Today is the day that we move out of the condo that we landed in when we arrived in March. And we move into the house we purchased. And our stuff arrives from St. Louis. So that's it, we're done. We're done, the movers are done. But now I gotta unpack. And I'm gonna be unpacking for months. But before I uh, get started on the unpacking, I'm gonna introduce you to Dorothy Sierra. This is my magical real estate agent that I used here in Las Vegas. So, if you're planning on moving to Vegas or moving out of Vegas and you need a real estate agent, there you go. I will link her information below. One of me getting spanked at the Bellagio. So we're in the Bellagio parking garage. Decided to take a walk because this session, things aren't going the best. Probably been here for three, three and a half hours in the game for 2500 Another that ended prematurely because my phone died. A mid-session update at the Encore that was pretty standard. So we are at the win, playing 2-5. And normally this is where I do the mid-session update. I think I've been in the game two and a half hours or so. I could squeeze the mid-session update in here, but this ain't the mid-session update. Maybe it is, but it's probably not. What this is, is Jamin needs to take a break because Jamin's playing like ass update. Until I noticed there was a drunk, naked woman behind me getting dressed. Fun fact, during all that mid-session update, there was a girl over here in the bushes getting dressed. A trip to Caesars, all kinds of good stuff. So I came over to play uh, some poker at Caesars with Conrad. I'm so I'm trying to pay people to get in the game. They won't take the money. I don't know what's going on. On top of the win again, in the game for 2000, out for 1999. So stuck. A dollar, but stuck. But alas, for the moment, it's vaulted. Let's get on to September.
Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. So your first question might be, Jamin, where are you at? Why are you in a hotel? So let me uh, tell you a quick story. Me and my buddy Andrew Nini, you know him. We were out on the town, you know, having some drinks, losing a bunch of money at the Golden Nugget. When uh, we met a fan of our blogs, she was great. Great fan, great person, good poker player. And we both looked at each other and we looked at her and we said, you should create a blog. You have the perfect personality, perfect backstory. People would love you. She said, nah, I can't do that. Looks too hard. I don't know any biography. I don't know what I'm doing. We said, do it anyway. It took a little while, but she finally came around and she created that blog. And just like we thought, people loved it and they love her. And so she's having a meetup game tonight. I believe this is her first meetup game. It's here in Chandler, Arizona. And so I'm here to attend meetup game and to support my girl, Poker Face Ash. Let's get it. 50 on the fast stick, you can get high with me. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? So we are here. We've made it to Gila River Lone Butt. Is that what it is? Lone Butt? It can't be Lone Butt, right? Lone Booty? I, I don't know. Never been here. We'll figure out what it's called. We'll figure out what we're playing. I think it's a 13600 max. I think it's a 13600 cap game that plays as a 2 to 200 spread limit. I think. I guess I will uh, find out in a couple minutes. Then I'll let you guys know. Hang in there. This is a work in progress. I arrive at Gila River and make a beeline to the poker room. I know the meetup game has already started, and I'm anxious to see my friend Ash. Congratulate her on all her successes, and possibly jump into a game. Although the room is cavernous, I spot her right away. Sing her praises, take some picks, and jump right in. The game du jour is a 2-200 to 200 spread limit game. I'd actually never played spread limit before. But it turns out that the difference between spread limit and no limit is that in spread limit, although you can still bet any amount, it has to be within a given range. In this case, that range is between two and $200. So yeah, very different. Right away, and I mean right away, I start playing badly. Not just a little badly, I mean a lot badly. What is it, 12? Is 3-9 offsuit worth $12? Yeah. <laughs> Sold. I was in a mood, and that mood wasn't to fold. At all. I'm open 10 do. I'm opening 10 do suited. So yeah, I'd probably open that. <laughs> nice try. One time, one time. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Let me win one time. <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> do you have you 10 3 offsuit, 3 4 offsuit. They all appear to firmly be in my opening range or even my three bet range. Needless to say, I was stuck pretty quickly. But I honestly didn't care that much. I really wasn't there to crush souls. I was really just goofing off and having fun. Plus, I was playing the long game. I'm not a stranger to establishing a crazy image and then tightening up and going on rampages. I mean, I have you lot thinking I open with 3-5 suited on the regular, right? See what I mean? Either way, for the first couple hours, nothing much really happened. No big pots won or lost. Things don't stay that way all night long. Don't get me wrong, all my hands weren't bad bad. There were some decent holdings mixed in there, purely by accident. They didn't all win, but they were in there. You got me down again.
So, mission accomplished. My crazy image is now established. They've seen small bluffs, they've seen large bluffs, they've seen value. Now let's tighten up a bit and drop hammers. I changed my mind. Let's crush souls. There aren't many hands that can crush souls better than ace-queen suited. Well, actually there are, but I don't have those. I have ace-queen suited, so I try to make do with this one. Multiple limps to the cutoff, and he raises to $15. Zero chance I'm not 3-betting here on the button, so I make it 75 to go. What I expect to happen is that the action will fold around to the cutoff, and he'll have a decision. But that's not what happens. What actually happens is that the original under-the-gun limper decides to call 73 more dollars, then action folds to the cutoff and he calls as well. A bit unorthodox, but whatever. I still have ace-queen suited, which should be the best hand? Probably? Maybe? Three of us see the flop of queen-7-9 with two diamonds. Well, if I didn't have the best hand before, I should have the best hand now. Probably. Maybe? Action checks to me and I tank about this one for a bit. Obviously betting, but the wonkiness of the limp call has me curious about what the under the gun's range actually is and if there's a sizing that could potentially keep both of them around. I decide that the under the gun action was just too offbeat to give real consideration and if he's flopped a set, well he's just going to get paid. I settle on $135, which is a bit more than half pot and would allow either villain to call and not quite feel committed. The under the gun limp caller doesn't take too long before he folds, and before I can swing my head to the right to give an eye to the late position or opener, he's already announced all in. Quickly my brain translates those words to mean big draw, and I execute the one chip douche snap call. And you guys doing all that? It's fine. It's fine. Oh. Because you know you're doing 200, 200. I'm just keeping it. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's here where the difference between spread limit and no limit rears his head. Since this is spread limit and not no limit, he can't just move all in since he has about $600 in front of him. So the dealer pauses to ask if we want to just forego the raise, re-raise, re-re-raise dance that would simulate an all-in. We both agree to forego the dance and just get on with the festivities. Both turn and river brick. He announces that he did miss his draw, but he has a pair. I table ace-queen suited, and just like that, I'm unstuck. That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Ayy, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line. Bottom feeding out of line. Turn your heart rate to a dotted line. Yeah, my zodiac probably dollar sign. Got the energy to win in my I'm feeling great. Got a date with destiny focusing on my fate. I don't give a what you rapping, you been a fake. I'm everything that they ain't. It can't be, it won't be. Wanna see me fall, I can't go. I won't. So now everything is great. The plan worked, I have all the chips, and I still have the crazy image. Now my plan is just to sit back and earn. Well, that was my plan. The poker god? He had other plans. God's plan. God's plan. So one limp, a raise to 12, and a call. I make it $65 from the big blind with ace-queen offsuit and only the last caller calls. Not the limper, not the razor, the last caller. The flop comes monotone, king high, all hearts. We both check this flop. The turn brings the deuce of hearts and I bet another $65, a little less than half pot. He calls. The river pairs the four. Action goes check check. And I lose to King Seven Offsuit. No hearts. So, for an hour straight, this poker god has wrecked every hand I played. 
Every single one. I didn't show them all lest you'd be barraged with mist draws, small coolers, and suited aces that amounted to squat. Normally, the only way to resolve this is with an offering. Here, I provide that offering in the form of a $20 blind raise after the button has straddled. An early position player sees my blind raise and attacks it. He makes it $75 to go. As action is folding back around to me, I peek at my cards. You have to be kidding me. This is a joke, right? Who blind raises in a game like this and wakes up with aces? Me. That's who. Now what? Picking on my blind raises. The spread limit cap limits how much pressure I can put on this $75 re-raise. Honestly, in my understanding of the rules, I thought I could only bet $200. I found out later that I could bet $200 more than the last bet. I didn't know that at this point. So my $200 bet equates to $220 total, not the max, which would have been $275. It matters little in this case, however. So the bet is $220. It's $145 for him to call, and he makes that call. The 10 high flop is hardly scary, and I bet max, $200. And the most I can bet is 200, right? 200. Mm. And I get raised, another $200. which leaves the villain with about $13. He wants to put that in too. I oblige. Sure, are you, or we can keep it. It's, it's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do. You have a huge overpair, then you deserve it all. Perfect. So we've each put $400 and some change in on the flop, and he's all in. <laughs> the dealer burns and turns the eight of clubs. $15. Then burns again and turns the ten of clubs. It's at this point the villain turns over ten four offsuit. Oh nice. Oh you gotta be kidding me. Oh. <laughs> I didn't believe you, man. I didn't believe you. <laughs> nice Ed. I gave the poker god the offering and still bad things. Bad things, it's a lot of bad things that they wish and wish and wish. I did not believe you. I thought you were just thinking about me. Oh my god, that's so sick. Holy shit. Holy shit. I, I, I totally just wanted to take his mind just for shits and giggles, right? Excuse the language. Nice when you raised me, I'm like, I'm like, he doesn't have anything. I didn't believe him, not one bit. Yeah, that's the idea, I guess. Epilogue to this hand. The guy that won that hand? Totally stand up guy. He actually sent me a message on Instagram apologizing for his celebratory behavior after the hand. 100% not necessary at all, but I thought it showed a lot about his character. Thanks for the message, my man. Keep those chips warm. I'm coming back. <laughs> all is not lost, however. The very next hand, I executed a bluff with 6-7 offsuit and won like $37. So... Yeah. All right, guys, taking a quick break here. This meetup game has been like better than I could ever imagine. It's been insane. There's so many people who came. We actually ended up getting five tables, which is so awesome. 
So we are done here at um, Gila River. Gila in River. Gila. 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 Gila River in Lone Buddy Boots. <laughs> but something like that. Yeah, we're done. We're done. They're done sucking out on me. They're done sticking it up my. You know, in for 700, out for 215. But the night's not over. The night is still young because we are going to. Talking Stick Resort. Talking Stick. <laughs> Talking Stick, stick uh, up next. Gila River. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he loves your vlog. Poker face ash. In the flesh. Can you believe it? All right, I got one more table. From I'll... zero to 100, she goes. <laughs> I knew her, she had no subscribers. No one even knew who the. I had 200 Instagram followers. Yeah. He's the one who you, he shouted out my Instagram, and I got like 500 followers overnight. I. She's on her way. I would not be here, literally, if it wasn't for this guy. Right? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Oh my God, I was yeah. a little bummed some other my friends couldn't make it, so I just really appreciate you guys coming. It means a lot. Like it really, really does. Good. We love you. Yeah, love you guys so much. From the block with plain clothes and police, straight up to the top with bank rolls and rollies. Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky. Come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me. New casino number two for the night. Talking stick in um Scottsdale. Let's see if we can shake off the um run badness of Gila River. Make something happen here. Let's see. Although it was getting a bit late, I still wanted to get in one more quick session. Never been to Talking Stick before, so why not? I sit down in a 5 to 600 game, again, spread limit, and got smoked immediately. Bought in for one grand and was down one grand after the first six hands. Pocket queens, pocket kings, and a flop set. All lost. Rebuy. Back to square one and working on forgetting that I just got repeatedly smacked in the mouth, I opened king seven suited in late position of $15. Only the small blind calls and then checks dark. We see a flop of two, three, five with two hearts. I think about this one for a bit and with more of a winning image, I'd likely stab here. However, since the table just seen me sit down and instantly sprinkle $1,000 to various civilians, I don't expect to get quote unquote credit for having anything. Thus, not many folds, so I check back. When the small blind checks again on the turn ace of clubs, I just can't help myself. I just can't. I bet $30, and he pretty quickly calls. I guess I'm likely dead here. The river pairs the ace, and surprisingly, he checks again. I'm not sure what I beat here, but I know I'm not prepared for the mental anguish of betting again and having him hero me with like, Queen Deuce offsuit, so I just check it back. And I win when he shows Queen 10 offsuit. The winning would slowly continue, although not at a pace anyone would be impressed by. Overall, this session at Talking Stick was very short, less than two hours, and for the most part, was filled with unplayable hands. I did go on an interesting stretch of looking down at pocket pairs. Opened to $20 with pocket fours and got no action. 
Then I opened the $20 in middle position with Pocket Kings and got two callers, a loose player in late position and a really tight player in the big blind. The ace high flop was checked to me and I continued for $40. They both called. When the turn four of spades hits the board, the big blind now leads out for $100. Yeah, I've seen this movie before. Next hand. A couple hands later, two limbs to me and I make it $30 to go with pocket sevens. The same two players called. As if the ace high board with kings wasn't bad enough, here the flop comes ace, jack, six, rainbow, and I get led into for $65 after the first caller, dark checks. Fold. After the long drive, the meetup, and all the other festivities, I was pretty tired and staying afloat in this game purely on stealing blinds at this point. I did win a decent pot with ace jack offsuit when I flopped top pair. That's about as exciting as it got. It was time to call it a night. That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Ay, 12 can't really stop. Stone still pushing like a mosh pit. Ice dripping, think I'm hot. In a yellow bucket with a mop stick. I've been jugging jams like. Another night done in the books. This one wasn't the, uh, the best. So, first orbit playing, I don't know, their equivalent of 3 5 in the game for a grand. And I was down a grand by the end of the first orbit. Before I could even get my phone out, before I could record a damn thing, I lost queens to pocket fives and kings to five nine suited. Shortly after I lost set over set, and that was a grand. So, we rebought. Now we're in for two grand. Car dead for most of the night, but we did grind it back up a little bit. Cashed out at 1,259, so down about 750 bucks. You know, it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, this session wasn't very long. It was late when I got here, and I have to drive back to Vegas in six hours. So we're gonna wrap this thing up. Congratulations again to Poker Face Ash for a wonderful meetup game. I'm sure we'll see you in October when the World Series rolls into Vegas. But until then, if you like the vlogs, hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment, and um, subscribe. And I'll catch you later. And it won't be in Arizona. It won't be at Gila River. It probably won't be here at Talking Stick. But I'll see you soon. Sunday night, September 12th. Three, five, ten games going. Every one looks better than the next one. But it's late. It's always late. Always. And I can make you into <laughs> that, is that you want? you want me to make you into a cartoon? <laughs> and now, about three years later, she's having her purse. And now, about... <sighs> but you know what? We're going to figure it out. And we're going to figure out how to... Uh, but you know what? We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure out how to put. She said, nah, not for me. 1,259. So, down about seven, down about 750 bucks. And I gotta drive back to Cincinnati. And I gotta drive back to St. Louis, St. Louis. And...